Hello, I'm Jeff Hajek. I'm the owner and founder of Valaction. And in this video, I want to talk to you a little bit about how it creates chaos when you don't follow processes. So in the workplace, people depend upon the work that you do and the manner in which you do it. And they build their processes. Um, basically, they build them off of your process. So they know how the work is going to come to them. They know what to expect. So they create their work structure with certain assumptions about how the incoming work will look. Now, to try to understand how this really plays out, I'm going to take a step off of work and talk about driving. Now, driving is really just a very sophisticated set of processes that everybody in the world understands. So no matter who you are, when you get out and you see a stop sign, you understand what that means that you're required to do. And if you see somebody else approaching a stop sign, you have a pretty reasonable expectation that they're going to follow that process because the process is enforced. What happens, though, is people try to do something nice for you. And I don't want to sound bad when I'm saying this, but people doing nice things when they're driving often mess up traffic flow and they cause more problems than they help. So I've got a couple examples of this. Uh, one is I was at an outlet mall and there's a, a loop road that goes around the whole outside of the parking lot. So anybody leaving the parking lot has to make a, a turn into this road. And I was following a driver and she decided she wanted to help out other people. And every time she came up to one of the, the lanes of the parking lot while on this main road, she would stop in the middle of traffic and let the person pull out in front of her. And she did this five or six or seven times in a row. So once I could see it, if she was already stopped, but every time she stopped, she stopped all the traffic behind her and blocked off other roads behind her. And each of those roads now got more people lined up on it. So she was backing traffic up by multiple, multiple people. Now, if you think about 20 or 30 cars lined up behind her, it's a very busy mall. And that's why she was doing it. But now for each person she let out, she's probably stopping three or four people from getting out easily into the road because now she's created a traffic jam behind her. So this woman was trying to really help people out and had a good intention, but because she wasn't following the process that everybody else was following, she messed things up. Um, I also faced the same thing when dropping my kids off at school. And when leaving the parking lot, um, it's a T intersection going into an arterial and there's a left turn lane that turns across in front of me into the, the road I'm coming out of. And if you sit there, you can sometimes, the way the traffic flow, pat, the traffic patterns go and the kids crossing the street go, you can sit there for quite a while, but because it's morning and it's dark and it's often raining up in the Seattle area where I live, the windows are often glassed over and it's hard to tell what the person's intentions are. So a person may sit in that left turn lane with the right of way to cross in front of me and I'm supposed to yield to them and they don't move right away. So once you don't see them move and another car is coming, you have to decide whether you're going to go anyway or that person's going to take off because they didn't think you were going. So now I sit there and wait and a gap that could have let us both go now becomes a gap that only lets that one person go in front of me. And now I'm keeping traffic blocked up behind me. And it's all because there's a process in place that people are expecting others to follow. And when you deviate from that process, it creates confusion. So I don't know if it's safe to go out there or not, unless I can physically see the person easily and they're waving to me in front of them. And even then you have to make sure there's no other traffic around. So often that person just even though they're trying to do things good and have a good intention, it messes things up. And the same thing happens in the workplace. So if you have a, a situation where you're, you, know, you have a specific process set up and work is supposed to go a certain way and somebody calls and says, hey, can you do me a favor? And you stop doing the work in one way and do something special in a different, for a different person, often the flow of the work that would help out more people is disrupted. So one person gets the benefit but the rest of the organization all suffers. Anybody else who needs your, your help suffers, and it often creates a ripple effect, like an echo. So if I disrupt your process because I'm trying to help somebody else, your process is now disrupted, and you may have to, um, your, your impact may be felt by other people up and downstream. So I always recommend following the process, and there's some situations where it's clearly okay to deviate. If I'm sitting stopped in a row of traffic by a gas station and somebody wants to get out in front of me, I often don't go. I, I kind of let them go because it's very clear what I'm trying to do and it's very common for that to happen. But it's very difficult to make a guess about what another driver is doing. In the same way, again, in the workplace, anytime you deviate, people have to make assumptions about what you want, what you're doing, how it's going to play out. And uh, the people who are following the process now are delayed because of this deviation. So I implore you, 
I, I really want you to make sure that any time you deviate from a process, an established process, you have a good reason for it. And you make sure that that reason is understood by other people and you communicate it. Because otherwise, what you can do is just create a, an echo, a ripple effect, an accordion effect, whatever you want to call it. And it disrupts a lot of people and often takes quite a while to get caught back up, especially if you're running close to capacity, like you likely would be in a lean organization. So again, deviating from processes causes lots of chaos. In many cases, it's chaos that you don't even realize you're doing. Stick with your process. Okay, that's my, my rant about process following for today. Uh, again, I'm Jeff Hajek, signing out.